I'm Shira Tabachnikov. I work at Eacher in Communications, and I'm also the co-chair of Women in Fusion. And I have with me today Pietro Baraboski. He's the Director General of the Eacher Organization. Thank you for joining me today, Pietro. Thank you, Shira. Thank you, Shira. I wanted to ask Pietro today about um, gender equity and diversity and fusion. And I have a few questions for Pietro. We'll go through a, a short interview. Thank you. But I wanted to start with your own career in fusion. Uh, how did you get started? And did you already start noticing um, the role of women in education or in fusion uh, throughout your studies and career? Yes, yes, uh, yes. I, I've noticed that. So first of all, I am an engineer. So uh, yes, uh, in my engineering school, uh, uh, I already noticed that there were not so many girls at the time. Of course, mm -hmm. I had a keen eye at the time, you know, on that. And uh, so I was um, observing. And uh, yes, it was remarkable because we only had very few uh, women, in particular in my engineering course, that was, uh, say, considered a little bit, say, on mechanical and electromechanical engineering was not so much, say, frequented by women. And then I followed up and... Uh, Immediately after graduation, I was, uh, uh, yes, a student in the Jet Joint, a postgraduate student in the Jet Joint Undertaking. And, uh, and then I started to, to get in love with, with the subject. And, um, and then I moved on. I started working in the ITER project in the early 90s. Went to San Diego in California. Um, and yes, and, and worked also in Japan. And then I uh, moved to the, back to Europe, uh, where I, yes, worked a little bit more years in ITER and then moved in the broader approach projects. And, uh, okay, then for 15 years I was engaged in those, and now I'm back okay. in the ITER <laughs> project. So, but then uh, going back to this question of diversity has been my sort of um, observation uh, regarding gender balance and that um, as a general general trajectory of my of my career I observed that um, uh, yes that yeah we were very far from having uh, uh, you know a, a balance between gender the way I thought um, would have provided I think benefit mm -hmm. uh, to the discourse and to it yes. wasn't something that you thought about uh, earlier at, at that time? Mm, not no. really, but no. I think it's, it's been an observation. I mean, yeah. it's, a, it's a question of awareness also yes. with time, yes. Yeah, but you had a very international career. Yeah. Did you notice some differences in the, in the different countries? And yeah, definitely, yeah. definitely. I think it comes to the perception that uh, some uh, cultural perception that some uh, women and men have with, uh, say, the allocation of roles in mm -hmm. society. So when it comes to, for example, research infrastructures, mm -hmm. and there are parts of this that, um, that are in manufacturing, related to manufacturing and, and, and project management, and then, um, uh, let's say, operation. Yes, in different countries, there are different fractions, evidently. Yeah. I think in Europe, uh, we are not as advanced as in the United States. This was my observation. Eh? I, mm -hmm. I don't want to make... Yeah. You see, um, I'm not sure about the overall statistics, but generally speaking, in general, in Europe and also within Europe, it depends on the country, yeah, yeah. In particular in the south, in uh, mm -hmm. where I come from, it's it's yeah. more problematic than yeah. maybe in some uh, Scandinavian countries where yeah. they are more advanced. Uh, but when we go to Asian countries, so there there is also a big difference mm. between uh, some of the Asian countries, even within. Say. So do you think that it's important to have diversity in, in fusion? Do you think that would be beneficial? Uh, well, it's, it's beneficial and it is also fair. Mm. So there are two elements of, of diversity. There is a, a question of, um, of uh, um, yes, the benefit that this can bring to the discourse, to, 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 to the balance. I think uh, women have a different type of uh, way to see, to see things. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, like many other dimensions of diversity, diversity brings a value. This I really strongly believe. But then the, beyond that, <coughs> there is also a question of fairness. Mm -hmm. uh, also? Well, everybody should have the same opportunities. Mm -hmm. Opportunities to, uh, to, uh, to access uh, their aspiration, professional aspiration, management growth, and so on. Yeah. So uh, that's a fact of the matter, and, uh, and uh, irrespective of uh, any potential value that this can provide, uh, this is something that needs to be done. We have to be fair. 
Well, what, what do you think are the obstacles in being fair for women? Are there ways that you feel that uh, maybe they're being blocked in their careers? So, <clears throat> uh, look, from the way I see it, there are some, some um, unfairness that comes from uh, the instrument that society at large provides. Um, so, uh, so at women, a societal level or systemic level. Systemic yeah. level. And, uh, and some things, so, you know, we see that there are some countries that uh, set in place measures so that uh, um, some of these diversity problems, say gender balance problems, are overcome at systemic level. And some of them uh, we cannot, unfortunately, uh, yes, implement ourselves, uh, but we can mitigate to, mm -hmm. to some extent. Yeah. And, uh, at an organizational level. At an organizational level. Then uh, I think where we can be much more effective is just to be conscious about the bias. And uh, the bias is, is, uh, is actually a tendency that brings, um, um, not only it keeps the status quo, so to say, but brings uh, a lesser diversity. Because uh, I, I'm not the one that needs to, to prove this. I think it's just known, well known, that, for example, men tends to, uh, to be biased uh, versus hiring men. They like to hire people like themselves. We, they, we all do. That's right. That's right. Yeah. And, and, um, and then um, men have, uh, in average, a way to present themselves, uh, which is uh, sometimes in management position and leadership position, more, um, yes, uh, yes, okay. <laughs> I'll All let right. you say it. <laughs> okay, okay. All That's right. right. I think everybody understands. Yeah. And uh, this, this, um, this has to be actively, actively uh, worked on. Otherwise, we will end up having, um, yes, a reduced diversity. So for change, you need to take proactive measures That's that right. That's sometimes right. feel different or maybe even uncomfortable, but they could change the status quo. Right. But I don't think there are fundamental uncomfortable things no. to do. I, I didn't think we need to be unfair on the opposite side. I think we have to raise, first of all, awareness mm -hmm. and set in place some, uh, some measures to, to compensate uh, some of the potential biases that, uh, that mm -hmm. remain. And okay. uh, for example, because you may want to know some examples, presumably. I was going to ask yes, you that. Yeah, exactly. Uh, so for example, uh, uh, ideally we should make sure that um, uh, in interview panels, mm -hmm. uh, uh, you know, we always try to have uh, a woman present mm -hmm. and that uh, we check carefully, independently, the. The, um, the vacancy notices, because very often there is a bias even in the way we write the vacancy notice mm -hmm. that then may put off potential, uh, yes, uh, women that yeah. would like to apply. Uh, and so we have to set these things in place. That, mm -hmm. of course, has, uh, has uh, let's say, a cost, okay? Yeah, okay. an investment. Yeah. It has an, but, it is a, but it is an investment that should be done because it's for the benefit of the project on the long term. And besides, I think it's needs to be done. I think yeah. it's just to be fair that we have to do this. Yeah, yeah. So are you considering uh, some new measures at ITER as you're, you're new? You, you've yeah. been here for one month and I'm sure you, there are a lot of things that you're observing about the project. Do you have any ideas or a vision yet in how you see the future for ITER in this way? Uh, well, I, I think I'm not the pro here. You know, I'm just uh, try to enable things mm -hmm. to happen. I'm very happy to see that here in, uh, in human resources there is, you know, um, they understand the problem much better than me. Yeah. And so they just need to have the tools to do that. Mm -hmm. And I think our, our way is to provide them the tools, the, the, the resource tools to do that. Mm -hmm. And that's the, the, yeah. the, the best thing I can do. Talk about it just yeah. to, to make sure that everybody understands that for me this is important. We discussed this at the council. We have this uh, yes, conversation also at, with our stakeholder, so that also our partners, our DAs, collaborate with us. Because uh, one important element in all of this is the outreach. Mm -hmm. The outreach is essential. We cannot just wait for application to come in and just say, OK, look, there are no women applying. We, yeah. have, we have to make sure that we get the applications. And these applications require some degree of outreach that has to have a short-term objective, that's one point, and mm -hmm. also a long-term objective, which means mm -hmm. we have to be engaged uh, in the territory of the members yeah. to, to explain to students what ITER is, 
to, so starting getting the job pool fuller right. for women, starting at the education level. Right, yeah. to, to, to invite uh, young uh, students here mm -hmm. to yeah. see it and uh, just to invest in that so that, mm -hmm. uh, you know, step by step, I think we can, uh, yeah. uh, yes, uh, get out of this, uh, of yeah. this vicious circle. Yeah, I think people often say that ITER is a thought leader in many ways, so this could be another area where... We can uh, show I, I hope vision. so, yes. Yeah. I, I trust so, yes. Yeah. And of course, ITER has really invested in Women in Fusion. There are several uh, people in the steering committee uh, in Women in Fusion that help set it up with other organizations. So I hope that we can continue with this involvement. And I hope investment. so. I hope so. I yeah. hope so. And I really applaud this initiative. It's wonderful. And, you know, all I can do, I will do to support this. Thank you. Thank you so much, Pietro. My pleasure. My pleasure. Goodbye.